I'm driving along. I hold down the menu button for six seconds. Blinks the four-way. Oh, shit. Whoa, the really? Stops. It's a federal crime. <laughs> Yeah. What's going on? How you doing? We've, been, we've migrated to somebody else's living room. I'm Either way, folks, sorry. welcome back to the podcast. You know, my name is Jimbo. This is Blake, my Hello. co-host. And today we've got a really, really cool episode for you. This is someone, he's a prominent figure in the car world, someone who is an absolute guru when it comes to exotic rental cars. But uh, folks, with all that being said, I think we should introduce our guest, Rob Freddy, everyone. So Rob, you want to come in? Hello. He's doing. We've lost he's him. doing this. No, he's doing. I see him. He's doing oh, it on purpose. There we <laughs> go. <laughs> I knew it. I, I was just like, Jesus, did like, did he go with his kids or something? Like, what the hell happened? No, no, I just gotta. You gotta build the drama. It's like <laughs> yeah. you're expecting it in the fanfare and nothing. I like, no, I saw I you in the, the right saw, house. I saw you yeah. in the reflection. I was like, he's just yeah. doing this on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting here. I was all scared. Yeah, but how are you doing, dude? I mean, I know we've spent the whole day filming, but how are you now? I am <laughs> as good as I was earlier. Maybe a little less good because. Filming all day, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, I'm having a good time. Thank Sweet. You. How's life just been in general? I've got a few questions we'll dive into, but sure. just how have things been going? Because it's the last time I saw you here, this house was just uh, it was all it was all wood. It was yep. just the frame. We had just picked up the S65. Oh my god, that boat! Yeah, the oh. boat. Um, we had just picked that up. You were still building this whole place out. Um, so now it's very different. It looks it looks amazing. It's done. Yes. The uh, when you add everything together. Yeah. It's, uh, it becomes more complete. But yes, <laughs> it's uh, now livable. Uh, I'm happy to be here. I am good. Uh, businesses are good. It's it's now the slow time of year for me, which is great because I rage from pretty much April through October, November, yeah. and then I get to chill a little bit for uh, the winter months. So. Hmm. How did you guys, who who introduced you to? Like, how did you, uh, you know. Was it Jebo that introduced I, I me to you? I you just came up to me and started chit-chatting. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe Jebo No, no, no. I, that's that's what. It was at Katie's Katie's um, Cars house. and Coffee, yep. Yeah, you were there getting a vasectomy or uh, Jebo Not or something? at the Cars and Coffee. They don't no. Offer that. that was just coffee. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I was in that region for the weekend to get that region handled. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got a brosectomy with my buddy Jeb. Uh, <laughs> is that a thing? It is. People, we were in like the do guys like actually glo- do that? like global news, like global, news. like like global. Like we're in uh, newspapers in like oh, China. Yeah? Incredible. And I'm like, brosectomy. And I just made a YouTube video about it. I'm like, yeah, me and my buddy Jeb, we're gonna go get uh, vasectomies <laughs> together. And we had this whole facility to ourselves. Uh, the guy's like, oh, what do you like to drink? I'm like, I, I like Glenfiddich. So he got me a bottle of Glenfiddich 15. He got Jeb his tequila. Wait a minute. You did make a video. Yeah. And they like brought, a whole video on you. Just, whole video, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. No, there was a video of him. Like he had like his camcorder. And he's like, all right, my balls are getting clipped. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like sitting there having a <laughs> yeah. whiskey. I can't feel anything. It's just steam coming up. Yeah. I remember. Oh, oh, yeah. Like, that that's was, how it happens. Oh, but we met at the Cars and Coffee and I pitched a bunch of different garbage to you, but one of them I think that actually rang true was I wanted to film like a documentary sure. on you. Um, and then a little bit of time goes by, you hired me to do some videos for you. And I lived in this house before it got knocked down. Yep. And um, well, then Savage Garage happened and uh, well, we're here now today. Nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, no, I mean, we, we did a lot of really cool stuff. Um, we did. We had a lot of fun. But, you know, one of the first questions I'll ask you, you've told me the story. I barely remember it, though. But how exactly did Gotham get started? Like, what, what was the, like, the origins of Gotham? I mean, Gotham started in 2003. Mm-hmm. And that was uh, Noah uh, Lamenhoff, who was my partner. He, yeah. he met me. We were both, like, young guys. He had a Volkswagen Jetta or something like that. Uh, I had my Corvette at the time. And we were both, like... Uh, I want to call them lurkers, I guess. On that. Sure. We were active participants, but we were we were guys on Ferrari chat without Ferraris. Right. So we were young guys, um, and he wanted to start an exotic car rental company. Mm-hmm. He had a company called True Exchange that he started out of college with a couple of buddies. Mm-hmm. They sold it. It wasn't a tremendous uh, windfall, but they all got a couple hundred thousand bucks or something like that. So I was like, all right, like I'm going to go like rent a Ferrari and like, I'm young and I've got some money. Yeah. Um, let me go waste a little bit. <laughs> so I was like, uh, he went to go like rent a Ferrari in New York and he's like, no Ferrari rentals here. Mm-hmm. So then he just like looked and, and reverse Google searched how many people like, I can't be the only one looking for a Ferrari. And he's like, oh, there's like 75 people a day on average looking for Ferrari rental New York. Now, not everyone is going to rent, 
But I figure if I get one car, like I, there's got to be enough business that I can at least get like one car out mm-hmm. consistently. And uh, so I met him. He got the Ferrari. I met him before he bought the Ferrari, but I met him at one of these Ferrari shows. Right. And we're just the two young guys. Like, hey, what's up? Like, we're just chit chatting. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, I do these things called fun runs. Me and my buddies go out and drive. And I, I assumed he had a car. I didn't know he was driving a Jetta. But he was, like, very proud of his, like, Jetta with his coilovers and everything <laughs> like that. And I'm like, he's like, yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah, you should come on the fun runs with us. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, you drive a Jetta. Yeah, you're not going to keep up. And, he's and like, no, no. See, like, I'll You had up. a vet at the time. I had a vet. Ra- yeah. yeah. And we're, like, raging up the highway at 170 miles an hour. So, like, for him to be like, yeah, yeah I'll keep up. I'm like, I don't think you will so like anyway uh fast forward he got the ferrari a couple months later he called me up at, as we were finishing one of our fun runs mm-hmm. and he met up with us at hooters and wayne and then he came on one of our next drives and he's like oh holy shit like i would have never kept up in the yeah. chat. <laughs> i'm like yeah. yeah i was like i wasn't saying it to be rude i just like it's unsafe if we're ripping around and you're like zipping through traffic to try to keep up with us mm-hmm. that, that's that's creating an unsafe condition it's got nothing that, like you can come with us in the cars it's not not meant to be but it just like yeah the, the, the way we're an hour yeah the way we're breaks, going yeah you know? you're not you're not gonna be you're yeah. not gonna be safe yeah. and you're not gonna be participating the same way you would be if you had a, a sports car. But after you guys met, you guys, I guess, you, how did you guys get together? Like, what was the inception? Well, that that, of that was how we got together. He started the company without me. Okay, and uh, he didn't really know what he was doing. So like, he showed up in this Ferrari 360 that he got at that at Hooters and Wayne. That's where we met. Uh, after that car show, it was the first time I saw him again. I'm like, oh, we'll hang out. This guy's bringing a Ferrari. It's pretty cool. <laughs> sure. And um, he shows up with the car, and, it, like, it's clear that he doesn't really know what he's doing mm-hmm. with cars. Like, he, he knows he's got a Ferrari. He knows he's renting it. Somebody hit the fender, you know, usual, like, rental car mm-hmm. stuff. He's like, yeah, the car's going to be down for, and we're just talking. He's like, the car's going to be down for, like, three weeks, and it's going to, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, he's got a dent in the fender. How, how hard is that to, like, <laughs> fix and repaint? Right. And he's like, yeah, it's a twenty thousand dollar repair. I'm like, no, it's not. Twenty? Why would it cost twenty grand? And he was going through like Classic Coach, which oh, is like Triarcy's place. And he's like, yeah, it's got to be a Ferrari certified. I'm like, no, it doesn't, dude. You're renting a, a car that's going to be rented out, and ultimately that car ended up burning to the ground. But um, it it, it did so after like ninety thousand miles. So it's not, it's not like it was. Um, it's not. It was. It was a car we started with, and it had a, a it Viking was worth funeral. It. Yeah, it yeah. was. It, it it did the uh, the circle of yeah. life for that car. That's probably one of the higher mileage three sixties too. No, I mean, you know, I mean, if people had true mileage on their cars, I yeah. bet there's a, a handful of them up there. Mm-hmm. The three sixty takes it. My um, my three sixty coupe I bought with like forty five thousand miles on it. I think I sold it with like sixty thousand miles mm-hmm. on it. I remember doing a video about that and my cost of ownership after like four years was like, like we're factoring in everything, even down to the insurance on the loan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I put zero down. I bought this car. I did the major service. I did like all the stuff that it needed over the years. Mm-hmm. And it cost me like 113 bucks a month or something. Jeez. That's, that's not bad. Not so bad because depreciation is one of the biggest expenses that people see with their Camrys or Lexuses or whatever they buy. And this car, I sold it for 5000 more than I bought it for. Mm-hmm. So, like, yes, I did have maintenance expense, but, like, when you amortize everything over four years, it cost me whatever. What do you think is one of the best deals you've had on one of your cars? Like, you know, you know, buy the car, flip it for, and you end up making X. I know, mean, 10, my, my F8, I'm about to sell in the next couple of months, and I'll probably make 200000 on that car. Christ. So Off the F8? Off the F8. Wow. So it's a F8 Spider. And what's the um, cause of that? Just the demand? Just There's the demand, just very yeah. few and, of them? and like it's a weird time in the market. This isn't even like COVID bubble. Yeah. This is we're running out of like internal combustion engine cars, like Ferrari switching yeah. over like the 296 and everything. So yeah. everything's going to be hybrid. So guys want to get their hands on like at least one last fun car and something that's that like makes late noise. Too. Yeah. It's like the it's going to be the last like natural, not even naturally aspirated, but like uh internal combustion engine only mm. Ferrari sounds like the, uh, the, whatever their SUV is called. But I saw that when I was the at the person, factory. The person something. Yeah. I, it didn't do much for me. It was, I thought it was a halfway decent looking four door car. It, I did, mean, it, if you see, I, cause I actually saw it yeah. and, um, the, it's very cramped. So it, it's, so it's almost like a it two looks plus small. two. It is. It's like, it's like, there's not a lot of trunk space and it's almost like a two plus two. When you go see an Urus, it's like, all right, it's like a, 
Q5 or something like right. that. It's it's big. Yeah. Um, you can fit stuff in it. It can function as an SUV just with a, a whole bunch of horsepower. The uh, Ferrari is more like a midsize, like a, like a, a smaller, like a Range Rover Evoque. Okay. I got you. Okay. So like small back seat, like it it's almost feels like the the Lusso or something where it's a mm-hmm. two plus two, just with more of a um mm-hmm. uh SUV body shape. I but there's you. not a lot of like it's it's not something I'd want to be in the back of for a long time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like I like the uh, the suicide doors. Those are cool. Yeah, no, the, the the doors were cool. Like I saw it driving on the road, and I'm like, oh, that's a cool looking car. Mm-hmm. But um, at the end of the day, it's like for four hundred thousand dollars. I'm it's it's a hard pass by me for that one. Yeah, like four hundred thousand. Yeah, that's what they're at. Holy crap! And is that's going to be a naturally or is that MSRP? No, that's MSRP. Whoa, that's it's going to be <laughs> yeah. For, uh, but I mean, Rolls Royce does it with the Cullinan. What what are the Cullinans MSRPs? I mean, they they're up there. They're like mm-hmm. three fifty probably base, and then plus options. So yeah. people driving around five hundred thousand dollar Cullinans. Mm-hmm. One of the things with Gotham, you know, over the years, and one of the things that um, really uh, was exciting for me when I first started working with you was just all the stories I had heard over the years between the best cop yep. moments and um, all the you know just different stuff that was on YouTube from your DVDs back in the day. And one of the stories that I looked at and went, how the f- did that happen was um, you drove around in like a 40th anniversary Murcielago yeah. and uh, you were like 18 or something at the time. Like wh- what was um, the story on that? Because I that was is such a cool car. That was an 03 or 04. So I was like 23. Okay. Um, that was the first Lamborghini I ever drove. Nice. And I wanted to buy one. Now I'm mm. just going to drive uh Stradman's. Yeah. <laughs> like the best thing about cars is like at a certain point in time, you don't need all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Having friends that also have cool cars, I, you can I, be I like, yeah, hey, here are the keys. It was complete chance. I saw that car like two weeks before he took delivery of it. It was a beautiful car. We just happened to be in Utah. Was it, it was, that one? It was yeah. that one. That was his car that we saw at That's the warehouse. That's wild. That's yeah. crazy. But, you know, we just happened to see it, and it, it was a really pretty car. Yeah, no, I, I liked it, and I, it was sentimental because it was like the first one I drove. So the way I was able to get that is uh, Manhattan Motor Cars, uh, oh. Brian Miller, they – they brought a lot of the exotics to the New York Auto Show. Okay. And every gotcha. year I displayed at the auto show. And he would help them get cars back to the dealership. And obviously, you give two young guys two Lamborghinis, we're going to get lost. Did they give Even you, though te- it was, did it they was like, give you like dealer tags or anything? No, no tags. Because <laughs> we're only going two blocks down the road. Yeah. But we're like, all right, full send. And um, we ended up driving... Uh, we, I mean, we're all over the city. Not all over the city, but we went for like a 15 or 20 minute joyride up and down the West Side Highway. Wait, I mean, and you said you, so there was another person. There who, was a, the orange one, too. Oh, the orange so, one. Okay, yeah, So yeah, my yeah. buddy Dan Coyle had the uh, orange one. I was in the blue one. Right. So. In terms of rental cars now, um, with rentals, I'm sure you get asked all the time, like, what some of your, like, worst rentals have been. Is there anything, like, in recent memory, like a story you haven't told yet somewhere? You know, oh, we'll I get an exclusive Savage podcast, podcast exclusive. I don't know. I mean, there there's rentals that I, I like. I mean, you look at any rental, say uh, somebody does, like the, the Z06, for example. I, I documented what happened to it. But the kid. For those who didn't see it, like a quick, 20 quick year, summer. 20 year old uh, begged me to, to rent him. The, he's turning 21 in a couple of weeks. We have a 21 age limit, mm-hmm. which is like, we, we impose it, but it's not like. 2021 20, you're the same person mm-hmm. like, yeah. it's not not nothing changes when your birthday ticks over yeah. so we verified the insurance and everything kid co- uh, rents the car crashes the car oh, and like he didn't crash it the first day he extended it another like two or three days because he was having a good time <laughs> but uh he ended up wrecking the car uh, this is a z06 convertible mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't realize that and then like i was able to get the car covered by his insurance because initially they wanted to decline it mm-hmm. um but that like even though I got the the repair paid for, yeah. it doesn't cover, and they just paid for the repair. They didn't total it. I rented the car, even if I got two thousand dollars out of the kid. Yeah, I lose that car for months. Yeah. And like that's another question I was going to ask you about with like loss of use. Like, it, how do you go after that? Loss of use isn't always covered. That's a problem. Like, I'm I'm in a lawsuit right now for loss of use, and I'm uh, now I'm like one hundred and twenty thousand dollars into legal, Jeez. going after this insurance company where I would have taken ninety grand from them mm-hmm. initially. And now they're and because the loss of use is, is significantly higher than that because I was out a car for a long time. It was like nine months on a Lambo. So I was like, I, I just can't let this walk. Yeah. Because that $1,000 or $2,000 rental mm-hmm. cost me nine months worth of revenue. Yeah. So like. How is it calculated in general? Like oh, a loss of use. use is generally calculated by the replacement value times number of days you're without the asset. So 
if you're without your car for just say 30 days, you're entitled to the re- reasonable replacement value. So the rental value of which I'm a rental company, so you can use that. You can as, make it up. Kind no, of. not make it up. But you can use that value because like Ooh. that's what it costs. It's 19.50 a day to rent a Lamborghini, a Huracan gotcha. Spider. 30 days. So times 30 days, you. You, you could do the math. Now insurance companies may try to get cute and like you don't want to go sue them, so they're like, look, we understand you're entitled to uh, mm-hmm. 60 grand. But we'll give you, whatever, 25. I was about to say, do they just best offer you a lot? No, a lot of times they try to, like, try to do the right thing um, and say, oh, like, look, okay. like, show us your, like, utilization logs and show us how much revenue you're bringing in for the month. Mm-hmm. So, we'll, like, they're trying to make it right. Um, but, like, if you think about it, when somebody crashes the car, the car is now worth less because there's diminished value. Of course. Now it's an accident. So, if I, if I rent a car to a guy for $1,000, he crashes the car they pay for the damage, but I'm without the car for three months, uh, plus the car is worth less. Mm-hmm. So say it's a $200,000 car. It's worth $20,000 less at yeah. least. Mm-hmm. And and I'm out of revenue for three months. It could Any car could be $30,000. I'm out $50,000 for a one-day rental. That's kind of screwed. That's crazy. And that's just part of the business. You have to eat it. Now, these other guys, they like... A lot of, and this is the, these gypsy companies that pop up, they don't experience that because they just do these like BS, like personal leases mm. and they don't care. They don't have to worry about selling it. They just return the thing off a lease and pay for their mileage yeah. if they even record the mileage actual. The scariest thing I ever saw, and it was when we were in LA, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to mention the company because, you know, they've grown a little bit and they actually have a team now. So I, I would hope that they're doing stuff like you. legitimately <laughs> now. I don't need anybody else coming after me, but you know. I remember when we picked up the car, it had a jar of, you know, just empty weed in it. Yep. You know, somebody's phone from God knows where. And the dude's like, oh, yeah, well, it's just in my personal name. Just give me a deposit over Cash App of, like, three grand or whatever it was, yeah. and I'll send it back to you afterwards. Because they wanted us to, like, make some kind of yeah. video with it. It never came to fruition. Um, but I was like, you know, we picked up the car at just some random dude's house. Yep. And I'm like, there was, like, an Urus, like, in another driveway, and it's this little house. Like, yeah. I mean, the car was worth as much as the house. And mm. I'm like... This is scary. It's and, sketchy. you know, from what I understand, like, that's not that uncommon there. No, there's guys selling these books on how to do it. And it's like they put layers of people. Yeah. Like, in between. So one guy's, like, getting a personal lease on the car, gives it to the other guy who gives it to the rental company who then yeah. rents it. And, like, you've got all these middlemen trying to, like, defer liability. But this is all well and good until something goes wrong. Right. Because right? as soon as something goes wrong, there's not going to be any coverage. Mm-hmm. There's, like, insurance, any fraud an insurance company can drop you any misrepresentation you could just tell them it was uh whatever like you live somewhere that you don't they'll they'll deny all coverage it's Mm -hmm. in insurance policies specifically written that any misrepresentation is Mm -hmm. uh it opens you up to do a full denial of claim so you could sue to your blue in the face if you lie about something and all they're doing is lying about all they're doing yeah, it is every it's they're using it for business use there, mm-hmm. and it's just such a sketchy thing that a lot of people just take the risk on because like I got nothing to lose. Whatever, what are you going to repossess the car? Come get it. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about Turo rentals? Um, look, it's for a guy who one some of the hardest things in the business are getting insurance, mm-hmm. which Turo provides. Yeah, so that solves one problem, and then getting customers, which right. Turo provides. In exchange, they take a pretty significant vig. They do their mm-hmm. thing, and, and sometimes they make more money on your rental than you do. Right. But they give somebody the ability, if done properly, to make money off an asset. And and the way I tell people to do Turo is go out and buy that $15,000 car mm-hmm. and rent it for $60 a day. That's And get utilization up. That's where you're going to be very happy to be on the platform, not getting an Urus and dealing with all the headaches, mm-hmm. but like – Toro's giving you the insurance. So if somebody smashes that car or does something to that car, they're going to give you the 16 grand mm. back. You go buy another mm. one. Like you're not going to have such a significant depreciation hit with mileage or anything like that on a 10 or $15,000 mm. car. That's where the money is and keep stamping it out. Use your profits, buy another $5,000 car, another $5,000 mm. car. Now you've got cars pulling in whatever you, you net $30 a day per car times 10 cars. You're making 300 bucks a day, which that adds do up. the math. That's $9,000 mm. a month. Yeah, like that, now you're that's... making nine thousand dollars a month on a fleet of ship boxes. <laughs> you know, it, it almost reminds me of like buy here, pay here yeah. car lot logic. You know, it's just like you know, it's a cheap car as long as they make the payments and you ha- and you scale that, you'll yeah. make a lot more money. Um, you know, the the only thing I've heard about Turo though is don't 
they have a, a cap on insurance for like $150,000. They do. Um, but also I, I've heard the horror stories about Toro not covering stuff. But like oh, you're limiting. Really? I, I don't know anything about but it. But you're, you're limiting your exposure if you're renting out five to $15,000 cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, whatever. A car got stolen. It was five grand. You've made $5,000. <laughs> yeah. Or like maybe you didn't. Maybe you got totaled on your first mm -hmm. rental. You're only out five grand. Yeah. You're, not in, you're not out of trust with a bank because you're not misrepresenting anything. You're just buying something and you're, you're telling your insurance company you're going to rent it out. And that's what you're doing. And that's going to be the safest way to go about doing stuff and bringing in passive income off of Toro. That's what the platform was designed for. It wasn't designed to be slinging exotic cars. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> Left and right every day. Yeah, but I mean, and a lot of people do that. They like, Or like somebody that owns their BMW, mm -hmm. their, their 3 Series, and they want to make a couple of bucks on the side to offset their... Uh, their monthly payment. Or no, whatever. I mean, or their insurance costs or something, because like you can't... If you have a, a monthly payment on something, mm -hmm. you're out of trust with your bank. As soon as you start renting it out, you need to, you need to make it known that it's a commercial use. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people, and, and these, they're all... Uh, Turo and like Uber, they were all manipulating this gray area for mm -hmm. a while until they got critical mass. And they're like, now what are you going to do? Now you got to figure out a mm -hmm. way because we've got enough yeah. people <laughs> screwing you guys that you got to figure out a way to monetize it on your end. Yeah, I remember uh, it was a long time ago, but I remember when State Farm, they, they started to ask like my parents, they just said like your car isn't being used for Uber, right? Like it was just something yeah. they, they asked us yeah, when they were renewing question. our policy, but that wasn't there before. Uh, but now it was yeah, going back to like loss of use though. Cause that's something that really interests me. I'm surprised that you don't have any interest. Do you think it's because you're a much larger business and you know, you're kind of, you've been around so long that they trust your word. Cause I feel like Joe Schmo, if he was renting a car and said, Hey, um, I'm owed six months of loss of use. They might just give yeah, him but the Toro, run Toro, Remember Toro is not a rental. Toro's uh, well, I'm just saying peer to peer. So there, there is no general. loss of use on Toro. Oh, to oh Toro, I didn't... Will, Toro will give you loss of use through them. But they give it to you. I think it's like limited to like fifty bucks a day times like up to six hundred bucks or something like that. So huh. if you if you rent your Urus and it's down for six months, you're just out. You're screwed. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But outside of Turo, yeah. Um, have you ever had an issue like collecting on any kind of loss? Of oh use? yeah, absolutely. Oh, some some policies specifically exclude it. So now you could choose to sue the customer directly because the, the insurance company doesn't remove liability from the individual. Yeah. They just they act on behalf of the individual. Mm -hmm. So they satisfy the business that that's their, their thing. Otherwise nobody would ever have insurance if they didn't cover people. Right. But uh, a lot of the times they specifically exclude loss of use or diminished value and they don't have to cover it mm -hmm. and you can sue them, mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee you're going to win. Like lawyers are not cheap. Mm -hmm. So you start getting into lawyers and everything. You could easily spend 40 grand and then walk away with five. And it's like, why would you bother doing that? Doesn't make sense. Including cars having being uh, repaired. Cause I still remember seeing the first time your 488 got like wrecked. Yep. Um, Cause I remember you made a video talking about how it was just on like the borderline of being totaled, but they didn't total it. Yeah. Like, it, I was going to say, what was the most amount of money that you've made on like one of your rental cars? You know, I mean, cause obviously that well, 488 I mean, we've is We've had the 488 up. for a while. And, and like, it's the problem with stuff like that is like the replacement parts for that 488. It's expensive, right? Yeah. Like a carbon fiber, this, the accident itself wasn't that bad. Now, I can go around a car with a camera and look for every tear and rip and everything. And like, it makes it look really bad. Mm -hmm. But like, I would drive that car. There was no like actual like frame and structural damage that would prevent that car from ever driving straight again. Mm -hmm. Like if you slide sideways into a telephone pole, I'm not fixing that car. Right. <laughs> but you wipe out a front bumper and a headlight and a hood. Like you don't touch any of these structural components. The wheels are exactly where they mm -hmm. belong. Yeah. Like if you break a suspension, like the A arm snaps in half, like that's still... The frame itself that everything bolts up to is right. straight. So that that's sort of my bar of what I would um, fix and not fix. But that car has done very well. It's, uh, I mean, I paid almost $400,000 for that car. And it's probably generated six or seven hundred thousand wow. dollars mm -hmm. and you'll still of course you'll sell the car once it's done yeah i'll sell it for whatever it gets ultimately but like if i get, I get 220 250 200 for it it's still like the it was used for business for a, a quite some time now wow that's awesome so by the time you move that car you'll have effectively you almost have made like almost a million dollars on one car it could be but like that's crazy you're not accounting for all the costs associated of course. with that so like mm -hmm. how's that car been other than the accidents it's like, been very reliable wise? uh the, anything after 2010 yeah i haven't really had a lot of uh maintenance issues with yeah so 458s hurricanes um LP 560s, mm -hmm. like anything that was produced after 2010, 
What do you think that jump jumped. was? Mm, um, technology. Just like, because it did okay. seem like that. You know, because I remember, yeah. you know, the the Gyarados got really reliable with the LPs. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I a lot of people vouch for the early Gyarados because you know people like to twin turbo them. Uh, but you know, those got very reliable. The Murcielagos, eh, not really. I mean, I don't know if it was just they weren't driven enough. Yeah. It wasn't enough of a platform car. But it did seem like once we hit like 2010, 2012, all of the cars got you know to the point where people went, you could daily drive this. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the like you mentioned the four or five eight, you'd let me drive. It was one point we were dropping off some rental. You let me drive it back at one sure. point, and I drove. I was like, I, you could drive this every yeah. day. I wouldn't, yeah. but, you know, like, you could. It was so easy to drive. Yep. I, got a qu- I got a question for both yeah. of you. Yeah, go ahead. This is back to uh, the YouTube days when you guys used to work together. Okay. And this is a question for both. We can, we can go one at a time. Yeah. What is your favorite memory of him oh. on camera and off camera, vice oh, versa for you? Okay. Ooh. Oh man, now that's some. I just threw this out now, but it's yeah, a great question. Deep, yeah. it, you know, make, yeah. making you think. Yeah, that was quick. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in terms of my favorite memory of you on camera, you you've had a lot of good moments. <laughs> like, I there's a lot there's a lot of stories I tell people um early earlier today. You know, not on camera here, but um, when we were filming the video that we're up, we'll put up on Savage Garage. Um, you know, one of my favorite moments was, um, when I don't remember what the hell we were talking about. It was like a 17, it ended up being a 17 or 18 minute video, (laughs) but, um, you know, Rob, you, you've always been able to just talk and I understand the reasoning behind it. I remember the video. I think it was, uh, the gumball video where the guy. It was the the (laughs) gumball. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah, You were talking. And I remembered like, I'm like, I just can't. Like I have to, I can't exclude any of this. I'm yeah. not rambling. It just, this is all like pertinent <laughs> to the story. Yeah. Like I, could, I wish I could do that. And I understand the yeah. logic behind it. It's like, well, if I can just do it in one take, it's less editing. Yeah. Like I, don't that, have to edit it. yeah, yeah. I wish. I mean, Shmi does that, right? Dude, Tim, have, have you seen Tim film a video? Shmi? Um, I, I know Tim. I, 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 I don't watch anyone's videos. I don't watch my own videos. I don't get offended when people don't watch my videos. Like, <laughs> just nobody has time, man. Yeah. It, like, it's like if there's like one video, I'll, I'll watch maybe one video a year from people mm-hmm. if something like sort of jumps but out. But have at you me. seen him film his? Videos? I've never, I've never watched him film. So Tim is very particular. Um, okay. the, great guy, by the way. Yeah. You know, he's very, very nice. Um, but what he'll do, and we we saw it in real time. He will talk with his camcorder, walk around a car, do a walk around. He could be six minutes in. If he flubs a word, he'll restart the entire video. Like if he he'll restart, the, yeah, yeah, because he doesn't want to make any cuts. He wants to just be I able mean, to it's go. It's not hard put to it hide it. editing software like, and it, go. Like you can hide one edit. Oh here. yeah, but I, you know, I remember we were filming. Um, this was back in like 2019. He came to Maryland and we filmed some collab video, and um, I think we got like three minutes in, and he was like, "Oh, we got to restart." You yeah. know, and uh, you I know. mean, I've done that. If I start to be like, "Oh, you know, I'm going off tan," like my my thought train i'm skipped something or something i'll reset it's easier to reset uh but it's not usually if i'm 10 minutes in i'll go back to my last like where i left off sort of thing and then just reset Mm -hmm. from there Mm -hmm. yeah uh so there's that one cut that i can hide pretty easily yeah just put an overlay on or something but yeah i mean he's um but he's got his stuff down to a science you know he's very very uh, particular with it but yeah Going back to that video, it was mm. about gumball. I don't remember exactly what the subject matter was. The, was the it... guy crashed the car and then did a class action lawsuit against me. Oh, yeah. After okay. he, like, damaged the car, and I tried to charge him to fix it. Right. And he, he broke the car in the middle of—he left it in Vegas. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. I, had to, I remember like, pay this to get now. it back, yeah. and then he, he wanted me to—I'm like, all right, what, what can I do to, like— Square up with mm. you. Like, I'll cover your rental car from Vegas to L.A. Mm. And he's like, no, I don't want to pay for the rental. So he wanted, like, $45,000 back. I'm like, dude, you just put 2,500 miles on the car. Wow. You smashed up the bumper. You mm-hmm. did all this. Yeah. You said the air conditioning wasn't working. I-, I told you to go try to get it recharged. You're driving through the desert in a, in a LP640 Roadster with no top. <laughs> yeah. 110 degrees. So, like, of course. the air conditioning is not going to be that great yeah. anyway. Yeah. But uh, I'm like, I got a new air uh, AC condenser. Mm. I shipped it over to Denver. I had it sitting there. The dealership, then you didn't want to wait for them to install it. So you left and I'm like, don't look at me. Yeah. So you left the car there and you said, like, give me my $45,000 back. And I said, no. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah. like, I'll give you five grand back or something like that. But you now, like, my other five cars that were rented for Gumball were in L.A. So now I had to have another truck go to Vegas mm-hmm. to go scoop that up. It was just, it was all a pain in the butt. We, we filmed that. 
it was in the old house. You yep. were sitting down in one of the. Um, yeah, it was like the, sitting in the. In yeah, the, and here. I'm st- I'm sitting. It was on the fireplace behind the tripod of the camera, and I'm just watching the counter go up and up and up, and I'm like, okay, eventually this has got to go somewhere. And we got to, I think it was like like 18 minutes or like 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 18:10 or 18:20, whatever it was. And um, I said, all right, we're good. And then you said, what was it, about 18 minutes? And I'm like, how the. F- did you know <laughs> that you just talked for 18 minutes straight and you didn't have a hiccup? Yeah. Like that was one of my moments. I was like, yeah, I got a lot to learn. Like well, you know, I, it was, it was really it, impressive. I used me. to make videos shorter because I'm like, oh, I respect people's times. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you got to make it at least 10 minutes long or something yep, like that, that came for the, the double ad breaks or mm-hmm. something. I was like, okay. So then I started like becoming a little bit more long winded. So then in my head, I started knowing where 10 minutes it was. Right. That video, I knew it was longer than 10 minutes. And I'm like, all right, it was like longer than 14. It was like, so like it just sort of dialed in. It was like, wasn't 20, but it was definitely up there. So, yeah. Um, and then off camera, I mean, um, I mean, I already, I already told this today to you guys, but mm. like, you know, off camera, it's, it's still technically on camera, but it wasn't in a YouTube video. It, it's you mowing the lawn in a blazer on the phone. I got to find that you described it and it's I'll just, find it. I, you know, I still have backups of everything we ever did. Okay. You know, <laughs> I still have it. It's just, it's sitting on like in my like archives. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's mine. It, I don't, do you have any of mine? Or any I of don't me? even remember him working for me, honestly. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to remember me no, either. So, I, mean, I was a pain in the <laughs> ass. You, like, you were, you were a little difficult. So Jimbo, <laughs> I remember, I, the, the Jimbo memory, I'll, I'll I, I don't know how you put up with me. So I, I had this house here that was before I, I knocked it down and, and mm. built this one. And the house was 1920. I got two memories. The house was built in 1921. Mm. So uh, Jim would like crank the heat in the house and then it would get so hot. He would open the windows and now he's got the heat running (laughs) and the windows open at the same time because he couldn't like modulate the heat properly. And I'm like, dude, I pay for all of this. And like, (laughs) you're living here for free and all you're doing is like keeping the window open, turning the heat on, like all the windows. And it was like, at one point the, the, the heat didn't even work downstairs. Remember, like, yeah, he bought all those space heaters, and that, and that's like, that, that's just like <laughs> well, I the bought Griswold's all the space heaters like, because because well, yeah. you had to, you had told me, oh yeah, I'll come over, I'll, I'll get the heat on, and then that didn't happen for well, a while. Well, no, the boiler went out, <laughs> oh, and, and you're like, hey, uh, okay. the boiler went out. I'm like, yeah, you're not renting the place. Go buy another boiler if you want. <laughs> like, I'm about to knock this place down, I'm putting a new boiler down in the basement when I'm taking the house down in six months. I was oh, like, I'm not boiler or whatever the fuck it was like oh yeah so i just put, I put space heaters everywhere didn't i I, fl- I flooded your house too didn't i you flooded the basement why yeah. did you employ it, him? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> it's just jimbo like you get used to it after a while you're like dude i mean you put up with like my mohawk phase yeah, yeah i remember the mohawk phase oh, yeah. that was that was, was he there for the the tinted sunglasses phase? oh yeah no oh, that yeah that, that, started... that's, that's still going i'm sure yeah, that you was, don't grow out of that. No, probably not. They're um, still in the basement. <laughs> yeah, there is no, there is no basement anymore. Not that, not that one at least. Yeah, so I remember, <laughs> I remember that whole thing. I remember. Well, that's that's less important. But I do also remember when uh, you brought up a train set for my kid because he liked trains for Christmas, and that made him very happy. So that was a good, oh, that was a good wholesome yeah. memory. Do you still have the train set? Uh, it should be downstairs cool. somewhere. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad I'm glad Ryan. He right. wanted me to yeah. build him like a train room, and I'm like, ah, you know, that's not going to age well. You're going to get mm, old, and that train yeah. room is just going to take up a lot of space for a long time. Yeah. So now I pushed it off from like the basement here because I'm like, ah, I don't know where I'm going to put it. To like, I'm going to put it in the garage, but even then, I'm like, sort of try to come up with an an excuse not to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when he gets his own house, he can put a train room wherever he wants. Wherever he wants, of course. I got another one if you want to rattle one off. So I don't know. I'm just, I, yeah, I got, sure I got ideas it. flowing here. No, was- you remember, all right, so Jimbo, when we were talking about going down to Florida and doing some off-roading, and you mentioned this. Uh, oh, the this, firm. The firm. And you showed me you got jumping <laughs> um, Crown Vicks, was it? Oh, we, we jumped. I mean, we had a Subaru, a Crown Vic, yeah. and like a ta- Lincoln Continental. What's the story? Because, like, you just said that they just let you just do burnouts and just everything on that. Uh, <laughs> not every like, racetrack has the no, same that, rules that's, about being yeah, hot or not. Yeah, the firm, <laughs> I, I know the guy who owns the firm. Uh-huh. So we were doing, like, a, like a collaboration to mm-hmm. the point where we were, like, helping promote the track that's existence. Because mm-hmm. it's more of, like, a rally school, plus it's got, like, a... I wouldn't say it's like the most complete track in the world. It's mm-hmm. not a very big track, but it's you can definitely go out it's and have there. a good time with yeah. it. So we were literally doing like, and I don't know which trip this was, but like we were doing blindfolded laps <laughs> and like just all sorts of what? stupid stuff. 
<laughs> but and even when we were down in uh, yeah. Texas, I rem- I do remember on camera is probably my funniest memory of Jim was the uh, when we were in Texas at uh, Lou Gelati's place oh, and he's doing the track the truck drive. and we're like, and we're like <laughs> yep. oh, let's do a lap of this track and it wasn't even paved yet. it was just like a, a, a map so like we're driving we're off-roading in these <laughs> trucks and, and Gelati takes us like yeah going this way and like everyone's buckled in but Jimbo's not so it's like slamming into yeah, the roof and, and of the and thing I've got and this giant like I built this like over the shoulder camera rig yeah. for um, it was out of uh, your FX yeah probably FX 700 yeah I built this over the shoulder camera rig and whatever reason I wasn't wearing a seatbelt I guess but you know we're, we're going Lou is driving at like 25 miles an hour on pay, um, just like a oh, field a field yeah. a field that is not paved mm-hmm. you know there is it, it's just bumpy as shit <laughs> everywhere this was this was the um oh this was this that was the same five hundred dollar car challenge we did when we went to um uh why am I forgetting um Hennessy's, uh, Hennessy's place yep. and we used way too much tannerite yeah that was a good time uh, yeah. we blew up Tan- uh, tannerite yeah we blew yeah. up my Camaro Remember the Camaro <laughs> <laughs> so and that- yeah John Hennessy we like set the thing up on the end of the drag strip and uh, we Just blew started it up. do a five gallon jug of water but like we filled it like halfway with tannerite <laughs> not knowing how much you're gonna need. No explosives expert. Yeah, yeah, no. (laughs) So we just put a little dot on the door. Oh, my God, dude. Do you know there's a whole entire – Do you? I think I told you briefly about it, but that um, entire thing, at one point when I was coming to meet you at your hotel with the the Camaro, I got pulled over. Yeah, I remember that. We didn't register them or anything. No. (laughs) (laughs) We didn't register them, no insurance. I was was with whatever other filmer we had at the time, and uh, I I think it was my buddy Preston. Okay. And he's in the car, and, you know, the the car's got no tag on or anything. The cop pulls us over. I think it's on video. I have have to check backups. But um, the guy literally, I just told him, it's like, it's my boss's car. Like, I'm just trying to get it over to this hotel. And he's just like, just get this pile of shit off the fuck. (laughs) <laughs> like you know we he, did yeah but um for, for good what nobody knew about that tannerite thing though was uh we we cut the roof off ahead of time no like, we cut the um or, what the was it b pillars in the back so <laughs> the roof would pop off but you didn't have to do that that yeah. roof was going off because we blew up the car at um what was it elite auto or something in, in orlando which we, we went we put a stick of dynamite in one of the cars and we went to blow the roof off of Rob Dom's car. It was me, David, and Rob Dom. Oh, I wasn't there for that one. Okay. Okay, and, but and yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. The, all the explosive force just blew out all the glass, uh, mm-hmm. so it didn't blow the top off. So we <laughs> were, like, giving it a little head start, and we cut the B-pillars I so see, that yeah. it would, like, flop open. Yeah, yeah. That top, I, I still, legend has it, it hasn't hit the ground yet because we're watching, and I'm like, like you watch the thing, everything starts falling, pieces flying past us, yeah. and everything like that. And like three seconds later, the top comes sailing down from like the atmosphere. <laughs> Mock like, Jesus! Oh, like holy crap! <laughs> we, dude, I remember when we did that. I remember parts flying, flying past. past us. Oh yeah, you're looking. <laughs> we, like, oh, we were way too yeah. close. This is obviously in but Florida. We, we weren't. Yeah. We, yeah. No Texas. No, this is Texas. Texas. This, this is the was same thing. Hennessy's Texas and Florida. Drag strip. You know, like in yeah. his like the facility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's not much difference between Texas and Florida. Yeah. They're yeah. both. They're both America. They're both their own countries. Yeah. or could be. No, they're they're, they're that's that freedom places. They're they're, they're good stuff. Oh, yeah. But um, now uh, Lou Gelati's track is actually complete now. Oh, wow, so really? So that, that track is, I, I was talking to Lou about going down and filming uh, me racing Rob Dom down there. What's or doing what's, uh, what's Rob Dom been up to? Just like, does still his working on his still four rotor. Yep. No, it's not done yet. <laughs> I just bumped into him at SEMA again. Yeah. Um, like that, that car has been to SEMA, non like actual raceable for the most time of any vehicle that's ever been to SEMA. Yeah. I think he should get a trophy for that. <laughs> but like every time, I'm like, yeah, let's go race. You he's know, like, come to think of it, you're right. That car has been at SEMA. It's never they run. pushed it in six times. <laughs> yeah. No, it actually ran this time, but just, oh, did like, it? Okay. just okay. like enough to like throw fireballs and everything. And yeah. now he's like, it's like a, a never ending content loop for him because mm-hmm. he can keep doing it. But now I think he's got to scrap the chassis. Okay. And like, Put everything into a different mm-hmm. chassis because the way it's designed didn't work right. So he's got to make a new tube chassis. Mm-hmm. So that one he's going to like hang on the wall. So like, because he can't go race it as is. He can go like make noise and go up the, the thing, but he can't. He can't do anything Seriously. legitimate with it. Yeah. So um, I'm ready to race him. Like, yeah. <laughs> like even my vet is now, um, it's going to make, I mean, I, I can handle like the higher end horsepower stuff instead of just relying on mm-hmm. like just working and not overheating and doing everything. Uh, that was a big thing I learned on Sorted is that like, I don't care who you are. When you start 
messing with a car, mm -hmm. it's going to be less reliable. Mm -hmm. We will Absolutely. find the weakness. There, mm -hmm. there is something you didn't account for that when you drive it down the road, you, you compensate for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So yeah, you could drive it across the country, but you know how to deal with your car. Yeah. You toss Tanner Faust the keys, they go hot lap that car. Yep. When we were in California, a bone stock GT500 would have won the whole thing. Like yep. straight across the board, <laughs> yep. performance and everything, because everyone else like, overheating mm. or blowing engines. Mm. And like, there's so much stuff going wrong with these cars that like one guy like snapped a piece of his drive line. And it's like, like it, we were, all, by the time we got to the, the uh, driving portion with the racetrack, there was only like three working cars. <laughs> right. And I'm like, this is embarrassing. But like, that's the Florida cars held up a little bit better, but like a lot of them didn't work well. Mm. Where did the cars from... Because I, I don't remember. I know the Subaru, like the, the $500 car challenge that I filmed with you, and this was the first one I did with yeah. you. Um, the Subaru, we just left on the side of the road, didn't we? Yeah, we uh, we left, <laughs> we gave the title to the tow truck person because the engine blew up on it. Like, that, uh, that didn't make it through the day. I remember um, the cop that showed up. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, the car, keep in mind, the car that was behind the Subaru that, you know, the motor blew up was a um, spray-painted, like, green and pink like Lincoln oh, yeah, Town yeah, yeah. Car. You know, that no, dude yeah, we, in had, green. we had that car for two days and then the engine. <laughs> but these $500 car challenges, that's not the first time. We bought uh, the first $500 car challenge, which was a lot of fun. That car, we, all we had to do was drive 90 miles from, uh, from Hasbro Heights at the time down to Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And that car crapped out in like 40 miles. <laughs> Didn't Vinny's car, you just Vinny, leave. that was Vinny's car. We yeah, left yeah. it on the side of the parkway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that from the video. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that, that's... Just leave cars on the side of the road. We, we've done that several times. We've left what cars. What happens? Just, we just like, leave the car with the title in it and the key in it and like figure somebody will figure it out. What was the you put like a fire starter log in? Yeah, that was in California. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we put starter logs in the engine and uh, and we drove out towards like the PCH to see which car was going to catch fire first. <laughs> wow! <laughs> um, <laughs> Christ. The Bronco or the K5 Blazer caught oh. fire first. <laughs> uh, I could not get my Pinto to catch fire, which is like so ironic uh, because right. they're known for catching it's a Pinto. fire. So yeah. no, that's amazing. But what happened to the Lincoln Town car that we had, like David's car? Oh, the uh, the stra the limo with the without the or doors. Not, well, what happened to that one? I don't. So I don't know about Rob that one. Dom brought it to the airport, okay. and he ended up like parking it illegally in like the train lot, and it got towed. <laughs> Then the towing company was like, "Yeah, we need like two thousand dollars to get it out." And I'm like, "Yeah, you keep that. <laughs> like, <laughs> we don't get two thousand dollars for that." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, it's cool. You've had it for like three days or something like that. I'm happy because we just found out it was like towed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm happy to give you a couple hundred bucks, but like, I'm not giving you thousands yeah. of dollars to get this thing out. So that was the limo, the Lincoln Town car that was spray painted. What did we do with that car? Which one was that? That was the... The one, the first one I did with oh, you. Oh, I, I ended up scrapping that, I think. That was... We tried to trade it in to Lamborghini Miami. Uh, oh! <laughs> they, they didn't want it, so we did that, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, cash for cars or something. Guy gave us, like, 60 bucks for it and came and Push it, it up. pull it, drag it, yeah. we'll yeah, buy Yeah, yeah, like, we, we buy cars <laughs> yeah. cash. I think he gave it. And I'm like, dude, the scrap value is, like, 400 I think it's <laughs> 60 <laughs> That's Sorry. great. And then what was the one other one that we had on that trip? So the Subaru went goodbye. The green Subaru. I'm, yeah, I'm like that. now confusing. We had the Isuzu Rodeo. Dude. But that was a different one. Dude, that, that was the, the one that we did in Texas. Does Lou still have that car? Oh, no, that's, uh, yeah, they had that down there. I think um, that was a Suzuki or a Su Isuzu? It was a Geo Metro, I think. Geo Metro, yeah. No, I'm, I'm the one I'm thinking of is the uh, green one with the smashed in rear window. I don't think that's the one you didn't come on. Okay. So, no, you did come on it because that's the one I think Ariana was on. And you did that video that was like really cringy as like my new girlfriend. Oh, in yeah, that was. And I was yep, like, that, e. <laughs> well, yeah, what happened? I, I, what? Let me tell you. Um, what there's happened? some really, really bad videos on my Click personal bait. channel from they're still over on? the years. They're still up? That's probably oh, yeah. up there. Yeah, okay. yeah, they're still up. I, might I mean, have to, uh... no, I've, I've privated most of them. Okay, got it, got <laughs> it. No, I mean, it was a different time. Very different yeah, time. Yeah, no, like you, you were trying to figure out what worked. And. And a lot of this with YouTube is like figuring out what mm. works because you can have, you can go do the same thing somebody else is doing and, and just, it doesn't stick. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, I mean, for a long time I tried the, uh, cause my first exposure to anything on YouTube where I was like, I want to do that was watching people like, like Casey Neistat. They yep. do like the lifestyle vlog yep. stuff and like circa. Nobody cares about your life. Yeah. yeah. Not really. No, no, um, but, that, but that's the thing. A lot of people start figuring out like. Just you're not as interesting as you think. Yeah, mm. and also the landscape changes because there was a time where, um, you know, once a certain style of content, you know, takes off, like Casey's yeah. video.
videos at the time were very unique. Yeah. Like prior to that, all you had were like the Roman Atwoods, yep. where it's like, here's my point and shoot. Here's a five minute video yep. of me being a dad. Yeah. And then Casey's like, hey, like let's make a short film every day that you know you'd present in film class, and then yep. the internet lost it. <laughs> um, and you know that that obviously carried on to um, it, it bled into a lot of other places. And like the automotive vlogging, like I remember when, um, and it was kind of right when I started working with you. That's when automotive vlogging was yeah. starting to become popular. Like I still remember us like talking shit about sure. just like got these fucking vloggers and their clickbait <laughs> yeah. shit. Like that, but that's all you. That's you all love there your is clickbait, now. yeah. You know, but well, um, I mean, and exactly, and that's why I would be like, I'm making my videos five or six minutes long. That's all it takes to, to mm-hmm. get my point across. Yeah. But like YouTube, like promoted watch time and the mm-hmm. algorithm, like gives views to people that keep people mm-hmm. on the platform longer. So people were doing these twenty minute videos where yeah. it's like, yeah. here's how much my car payment on my Lamborghini is, and I'm like, that's like. 60 seconds that's a short and that's not get, that's not a video like, yeah seven minutes like in, and you know? and you, you have to wait till like 19 minutes into the video yeah, and he's exactly. like and the grand total is uh yeah. and i'm like bro your video is only about how much your car payment is on your car how did you stretch that to 20 minutes <laughs> that, that's and, so you, kind you, of an yeah youtube <laughs> yeah youtube was able to like mo- like Pick promote that and that's that generated everybody's interest in it. Yeah, and the other thing is too, uh, just like kind of from a market saturation standpoint. Like nowadays, we were just talking about earlier today. There are so many people nowadays that are um, they want to do YouTube, and yep. I mean the appeal makes perfect sense. But you know, when I um, you know graduate high school, uh, that was when. It was before everyone like now. It's like cool to want to grow up and like be a YouTuber. Or that, yeah, that, that's the generational oh. thing. Yeah, yeah, everybody exactly. wants to be like an influencer. This sucks. No, <laughs> no, but like because everybody they thinks lifestyle, it's great. You know, but but like a lot of people, it's it's not as glorious as as people no. want to think. Like in especially if you're creating a persona, that's yeah. not who you are. Mm-hmm. So now you're like living this alternate reality, and things are not as glory. It probably puts a lot of people into like I've depression and, and other things. Well, I, I can that, tell you personally, yes. Yeah. The answer to that is yes. Because you, you feel this need to live something mm-hmm. and, and portray something that doesn't a- actually exist. And I pointed that out, especially in the car world, is a lot of these guys never want to race. Yeah. Why not? I mean, we're all in the cars, right? Yeah, like I'd race for fun. Yeah. But a lot of people don't want to race because when you edit yourself, you're, you're a pro driver. Everyone's yeah. like, oh my God, I can't believe this guy's not out there running Formula One. We'll look at his drifting skills and everything yeah. like that. But they don't see the 47 takes and the quick cuts and, the, and like, you're missing mm-hmm. shifts and all that stuff doesn't end <laughs> up on... Because you're editing your own videos. Yeah. So, like, I'll show up to these things and we went to some Michelin thing in California. Mm-hmm. It, well, it was like... Uh, we were at uh, Thermal or something like that. And I remember I was like, we're doing an autocross or something mm-hmm. on the new PS4S tires at the time. Mm-hmm. And leaderboard all these influencers and youtubers and everything and and i was like third place and i'm like how am i third place i'm not even like i i was like there's time left out there Mm -hmm. and and i'm like eight ten seconds faster than guys in a 60 second lap i'm like how are (laughs) these people like 10 seconds behind yeah Yeah. and but like if you watch like that audience thinks that guy's like king shit of driving Mm mm-hmm so, and the only two, I didn't lose to any uh, YouTubers. The only two people I lost to were the two uh, Jenners, the Brody and whatever, the two Kardashian brothers. Oh. Okay. And I'm like, but those guys can just go race cars all day because they're rich. They don't yeah. have to do anything. <laughs> yeah. But that's all they do. Yeah. But like, it just like, it was very eye opening. I'm like, this is why people don't want to race. Cause mm-hmm. when you race, your car breaks and you, it, it invalidates everything, the illusion yeah. that you're creating for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, one of the things I've started to notice, and I, I think it's, Part of it is because just nobody has what seems like the time nowadays to do anything else. Um, but also just I think it's it just becomes too much effort. It's, you know, collaborations in the car world have seemed to get a lot. It just they're, they're not as um, important as maybe they once were. You know, okay. I mean, to some degree, I almost feel like, you know, you see another YouTuber in their video and it's like, OK, cool. But like it's not um, it, it doesn't push the needle forward like you think you go do a collaboration with another youtuber and it like completely blows up somebody's channel everyone wants to pay attention to you they're going to watch every single one of their videos and then they they make a video there's a little bit of a bump and then after a couple weeks they don't care anymore or if anything i mean tommy and lz are perfect example because tommy um i mean he's smaller channel 250 150 i don't know where he's at but um lz is two million yeah and he like hangs around lz all the time but doesn't get that 
Mm-hmm. It, the, the ancillary, but then you have guys like Cooper and Cletus, yeah. who Cooper has formed an entire channel just being the Robin to Cletus's Batman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it, it goes both ways, but it's not like if if um somebody with eleven hundred subscribers has a Casey Neistat appearance on his video, you're still gonna have eleven hundred fifty subscribers. If yeah. if nobody wants your content. It doesn't matter who's on it. You can have Jay Leno on yeah. your on your thing. It doesn't it doesn't equate to like uh, this is all all if the of a sudden content blow is up. good. People will watch it. But and a lot of the times now, it's good content isn't necessarily rewarded. YouTube's got the algorithm, so everybody's always chasing this algorithm, mm-hmm. and that doesn't necessarily promote some good people, content. Some which is people sad. don't have the content either that fits that algorithm. Yeah. That's one of the you know well, that that's where I am. Yeah, like, I rather like I refuse to like go do all this stuff. I rather just enjoy myself because yeah. I can do this forever because mm. I enjoy it. Mm. Once I start chasing something and trying to do something that doesn't like bring me fulfillment. Yeah. Like I'm not teaching anyone anything. I'm just like doing it. Uh, like a, like a whistle and diesel, right? Oh, I, I bought a G wagon and dropped a piano on it. Like that's not fulfilling to me. That's wasteful. Mm. It's like, it's like silly to do, but uh, yes, it'll get views, but it's just not like I, I can, make money elsewhere. Yeah. Like I, I don't need to be um, like, and that's a lot a problem with a lot of YouTubers is that they have to chase this. So right. their, their carrot is in front of them. They're going to chase it. Whatever direction YouTube wants you to go. Mm-hmm. They want you to make 30 vid- minute videos. Everyone's going to make 30 minute yeah. videos. Yep. Like mm-hmm. it's, you're reliant on that. And and once you become a YouTuber, I mean, you're, you're limiting your, your job options because mm-hmm. you've now got no experience and you're going to go walk into a, a corporate job and be like, well, I was a YouTuber for a while. Great. Uh, How it, does that translate? So, like it doesn't yeah. translate into management skills, problem solving skills, mm. any of these other skills that that would equate to running stuff. Which is why all these YouTubers look for other ways to monetize. Mm. And it's like, all right, let me start my own brand of uh, car detailing products, yeah. or mm-hmm. like they always come up with something. Let me make an energy drink, but it doesn't mm. always hit. Yeah. So yeah. Um, a lot of people look for that quick buck, but there's nothing special about like white labeling and that works across the board, right? Like mm. celebrities do this all the time. Like they're Kylie Jenner, that, that the girl or the dad, whatever the, the girl who's like very rich. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, One of the, yeah. <laughs> One like of the Jenners. she, uh, she doesn't, um, make her own cosmetics. She's not there with her pot no. and like adding eye of no, Newton no, no. being like mascara. <laughs> Somebody's like, if we put your name on the brand, we'll give you some equity. And then she promotes the crap out mm-hmm. of it. And even if it's killed a million rabbits, they don't care. Yeah. They're, they're just buying it. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm wearing the Kylie Jenner. Of course. Uh, thing. And, and that's, it works. It's a formula. that's always worked. Mm-hmm. That's why like George Foreman made more money selling grills than he did oh, boxing. George Foreman. Yep. Think about that. Like, <laughs> The guy who he's he's gonna be known for the grills yeah. and not being like a legendary boxer. Yeah. Yeah. So, quick pivoting back to something else, we were um, I, I want I had a couple other things I wanted to ask you about with the um, exotic rental car space. Sure. Well, actually, well, because I know we're coming up on about an hour here. Last thing with the exotic rental cars, I was curious about. Um, so, are you aware of? And I, I don't want you to mention any names. Like, we don't need to put anybody on blast. But like. What are some of the like cons or scams you've seen in the rental car game that worry you like either old ones or maybe new ones that are going on today that you make you go, oh, that's going to be a problem. Oh, no, I, I see a lot, a lot. Look, with, with <laughs> yeah. anyone, when things don't make sense, there's a reason, yep. right? And, that's something you taught me. And, like, and yeah. it's yeah. don't take things for face value. Use your head. And if something seems too good to be true, if everybody else is renting something for $2,000 a day, why is this guy renting it for 500? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Something is off. If somebody's charging you a fraction of what everybody else is charging, doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. If yeah. there's a completely different business model that doesn't really make sense or like some guy comes out, like dealerships, right? You see these guys pop up all the time and the guy goes from like, th- there's guys that have been in business for 30 years and mm-hmm. they build up this $20 million floor plan. Then you see a guy come on the scene and he's got... 16 Bugattis and mm-hmm. this and that. And it's like, where'd this guy come from? He's got right. this like, oh, I just spent $3 million renovating the showroom. Selling wholesale cars doesn't generate money like that. Right. Mm-hmm. So like use your head and then eventually that, that all falls apart. There's a lot of that in the rental space. Uh, a lot of people are operating gypsy operations. Uh, I rented a, a, when I rented for uh, one of these big shoots, I had to go rent a bunch of Lambos from other people. And I'm like, this car that I'm driving right now, it is not a 2,000 mile. It was an Evo, too. But I'm like, there's no way this car's got 2,000 miles on it. I, I know <laughs> these cars, and I can tell you that this car has more miles. The rattles, the stuff that's wrong with yeah. it, 
the the the, the, the minor wear and tear. And I'm like, there's no way. 2,000 miles is what I get in two weeks or three <laughs> right. weeks on a car. <laughs> and I'm like, there's no way. So I, I call up Siobhan. I'm like, Siobhan, look up the uh, the odometer stopper. Thing. Yeah. How, how, what, what, like, button, like, what trick? Where's the, the right. button or something? And he's like, oh, you just hold down the uh, menu button for six seconds on the steering wheel, and it'll blink the four ways. So I'm driving along. I hold down the menu button for six seconds, blinks the four oh, ways. Oh, shit. Whoa, odometer really? stops. And I'm like... And I'm like, but that's how they can charge less money because they're committed. It's a federal crime. But of like, course. Oh, but like, and even uh, the, the shops around me, like service these rental cars. Guys come in for a new set of tires and an Urus. Yeah. With like 1,800 miles on <laughs> That doesn't that make sense. Makes no I'm, sense. Like, <laughs> I'm like, it's an Urus first off. But like these guys, I mean, you look at the condition. I'm like, there's no way this thing's got, but they yeah. block the odometer. So they're removing huge portions mm-hmm. but the, now they'll do an unlimited mile lamborghini rental for 1500 bucks a day and they get all the business because like i'm charging two thousand yeah. dollars and i'm i'm only giving you 100 miles and it's five dollars a mile yeah thank you for your your insight but no problem. like you said we we should wrap this up so yeah um let's just remind everybody that uh smoky the bear says only you can prevent forest fires only so you. keep keep he got that replaced. in mind by what smacky the frog i'm dead serious Dead serious. All right, well, Blake will pull it up. Um, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll catch that on a, on a future episode. <laughs> but uh, I was I was trying to wind it down. You're like, all right, it's another half hour <laughs> yeah. about Smokey the Bear. Yeah, I'm but down. seriously. Th- I, thank you guys for your time. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for uh, visiting. And, and I wish you guys luck. And yeah. thank you for having me. Thank you for being on it, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for all the support over the years. No problem. You know? So with that, thank you all for watching. You know, if you haven't subscribed to Super Speeders Rob, the link will be in the description down below. Check it out if you haven't already. And with that, thank you for watching. Take care and stay savage. Ember the Fox. Ember the Fox? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, get the fuck out of here. <laughs>